We've got the whole Shire's extended family coming out here today, and I really don't think it's gonna help them at all. Because <laughs> even if they do manage to close the distance, and they do manage to get some headbutts off, Zeus is no pushover, right? He can take a hit or two, he can definitely deal a hit or two. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap! It's like a hundred hobbits die every time he swings his hands! What's up guys and welcome back to Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. And for today's episode, I will be continuing with the campaign because we still have a whole lot of adventuring left to do. But first, I wanted to check out some of the recommendations that you guys left in the comments of last episode. Up first, we have Minotaur Bowling, 10 normal sized units, 1 Minotaur, and 1 Priest behind the Minotaur, which will make him automatically run. I had no idea Priests could do that. But this is a really unique idea, so we have our Bowler Priest, our Bowling Ball Minotaur, and 10 Bowling Pin Clubbers. Because uh, club is the closest thing that I could come up to for a pin, and I guess I just need to do my best. Let's see if we can get them all down in one charge. Oh, come on. That's not fair. Like, the bowling pins aren't supposed to be able to get back up. Okay, maybe my shot isn't over until the bowling ball stops moving and the pins stop roaming around. Um, bowler, you, you might wanna, you might wanna look out. That's not fair, okay, you can't do that. The bowling pins can't come after the bowler in revenge. There we go. I'm gonna call that a strike. Next up, we have 25 bards, two squires, and one archer. I thought this idea was really clever because normally when we use bards, we have a great big army of various units, all of which can fight, and then a couple of bards that are used as a distraction. But what if that was reversed? You know, what if our army was majority bards and we only had a couple of units that could actually win us the battle? Would the bards be able to protect our few fragile fighters? I have no idea, but I really wanted to find out. So we're gonna make them face off against two very honorable and highly trained knights who should not be easily distracted by these silly minstrels. I'm starting to think the archer's not gonna get a whole lot of work done here. No, no, you guys don't need to be heroes, come on. He actually killed one of them. Way to go. I was gonna say the squires are, ugh, they're kind of outmatched, they're tiny. I never realized how huge these knights are. Look at them, they're like eight feet tall and the birds are actually creating an opening. It's costing them, but the archer's getting some shots in. Come on, archer, you're our last hope. You really gotta get through the group. Okay, the birds actually did it. Next up, we have 15 roof catapults in Greece. It took me a minute to realize what a roof catapult was, but once I got there, I was not disappointed. <laughs> These things are so broken, and I'm really afraid to start the battle. I figured if we're gonna do it in Greece, and I can only apparently use $1,500 worth of units, we'll just toss out some hoplites. I'm pretty sure anything could beat these. <laughs> because they're gonna have a really hard time. <laughs> what are they gonna do? Okay, yeah, something tells me that wasn't according to plan. How are we even gonna get up there to fight them? Right, it's a good thing I chose hoplites because they're gonna need to use their sticks to kind of bat them out of trees. Oh shit, we actually lost? I was so busy making fun of all these Alzheimer's catapults that I never realized they're still shooting my units. How, how, how are they doing that? <laughs> they're all upside down or inside out or torn apart. Are you kidding me? They can still shoot when they're upside down or inside out. <laughs> That's bogus. This thing, okay, it actually shot the underside of the ground that time, but that is dumb. Next up, we have the epic half battle, halfling versus halfling. The second I saw this comment, I asked myself, if two halflings jump into one another, do they make a holeling? It's a question that everybody needs answered, so of course I'm gonna run it. And my money is on the blue Frodo. Oh, oh, that looks like it hurt. Right, face on face? Are they both out cold? Come on, Sam and Pippin, get up. You guys got this. Oh, they're going at it again. Oh, they're just swinging now. And giggling. I didn't realize that they punched. I thought they only jumped. They're kind of jigging now. There we go. <laughs> Did the blue guy win after? Was I right? 
Yeah! How about one Farmer Joe with 50 priests versus 40 ice archers? Again, a lot of the comments that stand out to me are the ones that kind of raise a question. Now, I have no idea whether or not a priest's healing counteracts an ice archer's freezing. But do priests thaw out units with their holy light? And if they do, does that mean ice archers don't do anything? Or do they still do piercing damage? I have no idea, but Farmer Joe is going to find out for us. And I get the feeling he's not going to have a very good time doing it. Oh, oh. Okay, well, uh, Joe's down, and it turns out the Ice Archers knew good and well that that wasn't going to work out for us. <laughs> because they didn't even focus on Joe. And now all these guys could just hang around, circle jerk healing one another, until the Ice Archers slowly finish them off. <laughs> I haven't seen a whole army get frozen solid yet, but they're just tipping over. Wow. Okay, then. So the answer is no. You guys made me freeze Farmer Joe to death, which I don't really appreciate, but at the same time, I do appreciate all the recommendations. Like, there are so many ideas that I would never be able to come up with on my own that I think I'm gonna do it again, okay? If you wanna see your comment featured on the next episode, then leave it on this video and make it unique. You know, now you have some kind of idea as to the stuff that I'm gonna be using. But switching gears, we're gonna continue with the adventure campaign and a level called Absolutely Not to Ambush. Which you would assume is sarcasm, but I don't see where an ambush could come from. There's not a whole lot of real estate here. It's kind of hard to plan when you have no idea how many units are going to show up or what those units are. <laughs> so I think we're just going to have to use some general all-purpose units like the Hoplite, right? They're really good at holding a choke point. We could just form our own little 300 phalanx here. Shield to shield, spear to stomach, and tried our best not to die. Technically, the 300 did die to an ambush. <laughs> Maybe that's not the best idea. And it was an ambush from behind, too. <laughs> that's cheating. You can't put units on my side of the battlefield before we start. Oh, my God. There's so many of them. Uh, That's okay. That's okay, right? We're used to facing off against greater numbers, right? Everybody just lock shields. You guys got this. <laughs> I have complete and total faith in my Spartans. Is this actually working? Maybe, kind of? I don't actually have faith. I'm kind of surprised that this is working. <laughs> yes! Ah! They actually bang with their shields and their spears. That could have worked. If I had formed them a little bit differently, I think that could have worked. Rather than deploying our entire formation into the chokehold, we're just going to use four warriors against their five little distractions there, and then the rest of them are going to be waiting in the back to face off against all the little surprise tree weasels. Now, when you shake their home, they're going to get real upset. So you guys need to all stick together and don't walk off the edge of the cliff. Are you kidding me right now? Okay, we're down to 299 Spartans, but it's fine because if we can manage to stop this first wave, then they're going to come trickling in one at a time from the path. So we can use our numbers. Yes, yes, okay. Choke point guys have survived. Oh, this is close. Come on. Don't, don't die. Get your spear out of that body. Get your spear out of that body. Come on, soldier. There we go. Oh, um, that's not good. That's not good. Come on, come on. You can do it. I believe in you. History will remember you as a hero. Oh my God. Is this actually going to work? Who are we fighting now? There must be somebody down there. Hello? Oh, there's one dummy stuck. Oh, this is easy. All you gotta do is stab him in the head. Even if he's got a helmet. No, don't. Oh my god. If that one dude hadn't jumped off the edge, it would have been a cakewalk. Like, we would have absolutely had it. It's gonna drive me crazy, but I'm gonna change it up, okay? We're gonna use some shield bearers as a distraction. That's right, I'm gonna distract the distractors, and then we're gonna mow them down with archers, because they don't have any shields, so there's no way they're gonna survive a bunch of volley of arrows coming from the side here. Let's go hunt in some squirrels, that's what I wanna see. There we go, just shoot them out of the trees, guys. <laughs> the shield bearers should be able to last for long enough, as long as you don't shoot them in the back, that'd be wonderful. All right, these guys only take one shot each, and uh, I'm sure you'll feel the pressure to start firing your arrows soon enough. They're getting a little close here. Come on. Oh, okay. Uh, is this going well? It's going well. It's going very well. We got the first force down, and now they're just trickling in. 
easy. Look at all the survivors. <laughs> Ranged units make a world of difference until they all come charging over the edge and get bonked by this guy again. Can we please get revenge for the Spartans? Okay, you guys are the free Greeks that showed up afterwards and finally did something. What are you doing shooting me? Sh shoot the blue guy. There you go. Get him. Get, push him over the edge. I don't care. Just, just do something. <laughs> He's cutting you guys down. Just, just kill him. Just kill him for the love of God. There we go. <laughs> and then everybody charged down after him. Why not? Why are Tab's units such dipshits? Moving on to a level called Mammoth Migration, where these four seem very confused and lost and kind of dangerous, actually. I don't know how I feel about putting units in these tiny little alleyways against those angry tusks. Now might be a good time to try the Ballista. I, I need to use ranged here, and I've been meaning to see what a Ballista can do against a Mammoth. Usually, they're used for doing a lot of damage against one big unit. They're not good against fighting against groups. Doesn't get much bigger than the Snuffleupa guy. So maybe I can get a couple of them in tandem and they won't shoot each other in the back? I kind of doubt it, but I guess it's worth trying. <laughs> Let's find out. Okay, get your shots off, guys. You can't possibly miss. There's no way. Holy crap, that was perfect. <laughs> Two shots in the head and it went down. Uh, I'm not sure how we're gonna get to the other. Oh yeah, just just wait for that corpse to decompose. I mean, it, it won't take too long, and then the alleyways should open up again. How's the other side going? Oh, we got them both. Holy crap! You see what I mean? Ballista, amazing against single large units. That wasn't even close. Moving on to a level called tower defense. And I'm getting a whole lot of deja vu right now. I have absolutely no faith in a melee unit's ability to avoid the stray boulders and then find their way up onto the rooftops. So we're just gonna cut out all those problems and use half a dozen Valkyries. <laughs> this should work flawlessly, right? There's no way they're gonna be able to shoot them out of the air while they're busy glitching out all over the rooftops. And then we don't even need to find our way to the stairs, right? They could just dive bomb them and, and take them out right away if they don't take themselves out. I'm pretty sure half of them just shot the back of the buildings they were up against and exploded. Like, what was this level? <laughs> was that supposed to work? Take this guy, for example. He's lining up the shot, he's honing in, he fires, and he's dead. <laughs> like, what was the plan there? Next up, we have Final Destination Berserker. And these guys are tricky. But don't let the armpit hair fool you. They leap right at your units and take them out real quick. So I'm not sure what I can use to combat them. Maybe I can go with quantity over quality? Like, what if I get four halflings? That would add up to two units. So it's a 2v1 rather than a 1v1, but we can make him come to us? Does that seem like a good idea? I don't know. Come on, my little fellowship, you guys got this. He's out there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, you guys form some kind of battle strategy. Oh, oh, here he is, jump, jump, yeah, yeah, you guys jump first, there we go, and then smell his belly button. Yes! Flawless. That's what you gotta do, you gotta jump past him and then punch him in the back. Moving on to a level called Hidden Barrows, with a whole lot of not so well hidden wheelbarrows. I don't think I've ever faced off against these units before. I'm not really sure what counters them, but I am really curious if ice archers can hit them. Actually, I do know that they love to run off the edge, so what if we line up all of our archers right on the edge of the world? I can hire a whole lot of archers here. Holy crap, okay, yeah, that works for me. <laughs> and then if they do manage to drive right through our group, then they should just fall off the edge of the... No, no, you guys gotta stay near the edge of the world. That was a strategy. Don't run at them. You can bombard them. But I don't... No, no, I don't want you guys freezing the wheelbarrows. You need to freeze them. There they all go. <laughs> Flawless strategy. <laughs> it's gonna say, we don't want to freeze the wheelbarrows themselves. We want to freeze the drivers or the idiots in the carts, I suppose. Oh, there's a couple that got stuck. Oh, no. I almost feel bad for them, but not really, because they tried to surprise attack, and it was just complete weak sauce. <laughs> Come on, guys, finish them off nice and quick. 
No, don't shoot each other. No, don't shoot each- Oh my god, they're gonna massacre each other because he's hiding behind a wall. You have got to be kidding me. You guys can't be this stupid, please. Please don't be this stupid, no! No, you even sound stupid. I'm not even sure what they're shooting at anymore other than each other. Is there somebody hiding? Oh! Oh, I see! One of the guys is stuck underneath the wheelbarrow. How are we gonna get him out? Can I like nudge this with the camera or something like that? I, I see you under here. Come on. There we go. We got him. I, I helped maybe. How about we face off against some wall knights, which seems like an awful idea. Aren't they just gonna walk off the edge of the world? Are they that stupid? Because my units are always that stupid. I kind of want to make them face off against Jarls, right? They almost cost the same amount. They're pretty much the medieval version of these Norwegian counterparts, so why don't we just do that? It's 5v6, which isn't particularly fair, but like I said, they're kind of dumb. They're gonna come in one at a time, so hopefully we can just chop them down and then move on as a unit. Yes, there we go. Raid, pillage, plunder. Go, my rubbery bear men! I think this is in the bag. I don't want to call it too soon, but I'm very confident that their units were just too dumb. Um, might have called it too soon. Might have, nope, nope. I was always confident, never lost confidence. I think we're about two thirds of the way through the adventure campaign for now. So I'm gonna save the rest of it for another episode. I wanted to jump back into the sandbox mode and try something that I've been thinking about for a while now. Wasn't recommended by you guys, but at the same time, I think it's gonna be a really cool battle. Because when you see a new unit like Zeus, that's just so ridiculous and overpowered and different compared to everything else in the game, you instantly gotta wonder how many of the weakest unit can he kill? I want to make one straight line of halflings and see how far his lightning bolt can travel. We know it passes through units, but would they chain together like a bunch of little furry batteries? There's only one way of finding out. Oh, oh it goes through about half. So it won't go the entire way. There is a limit to Zeus's powers. Interesting. And now I'm kind of curious, are they going to win? They can't possibly win, right? <laughs> Nowhere near enough of them. <laughs> they make little cries of terror, but at the same time, not even close. Could we make it close? What if we add another row of halflings just like this? Would the lightning chain between the two rows? Like, I don't really know how a lot of these abilities work. Same with the priest, same with the scarecrow. You know, unwritten abilities in this game are kind of a mystery, so you gotta do a little bit of experimenting. You missed there, Zeus, but I'm sure you're gonna make up for it in the follow through that went the whole way through the line. <laughs> so maybe if you get them really well lined up, it'll actually work? Crazy. Again, I don't think it's gonna be close, but they have reached him. <laughs> Okay, they're punching you below the belt. You got a couple of taps in the ball sack, but not close enough. I think we're gonna need a third row. I, I need to see the halflings take him down. It's already pretty impressive that $2,000 worth of Zeus can take out $4,200 worth of halflings, but we need to keep pushing the envelope, okay? There's no two ways about it. And I get the feeling that the lightning bolts are probably random. Right, there is a whole lot of randomness with the simulations. I really doubt it has to do with how straight these are lined up. But I can definitely make as straight a hobbit line as possible to see if that's true or not. <laughs> because I would love to see you cascade through all of them. Just just all three rows at once. One lightning bolt and just drop like a hundred halflings. <laughs> Let's see it. Come on. Come on. Go. Go. Ah, oh, you see it breaks off. Is that one gonna go? No, it broke off. Oh, it, it changed over. And it went through the second half of the other row. Interesting. So it does seem kinda random. It's just all over the place. <laughs> it's fun to watch in slow motion, but I don't got all day, okay? We have so many hobbit tits to shock that we might as well let you do this in real time. Oh, oh, okay. Yup, they're getting a little close. Getting a little close for comfort. Get out of here, little guy. There we go. So they got one hit in, but it's still not gonna get the job done by the looks of it. Hmm, 
Another row it is. We've got the whole Shire's extended family coming out here today, and I really don't think it's gonna help them at all. Because <laughs> even if they do manage to close the distance, and they do manage to get some headbutts off, Zeus is no pushover, right? He can take a hit or two. He can definitely deal a hit or two. <laughs> Holy crap! It's like a hundred hobbits die every time he swings his hands. It's about to go down. Oh boy, look out. Here comes the wave. He's definitely not good at fighting up close. Right? He can't get big groups of them. He can only lightning bolt one at a time. And they're sniffing his butt and he doesn't like that. He doesn't wipe, he's a god. Gods don't have to wipe, oh no. So it turns out it only takes like $8,500 worth of hobbits to take down one god. But you know what? I think that's going to be it for this episode of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, guys. And once again, thank you guys so much for all the recommendations. You know, they really make the episodes a little bit more special for me. So be sure to leave a comment on this video, let me know, and I'll return for more tabs in a few days. But thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Yeah.